Before we go any further, here's a test for your left earbud, a test for sound from the center, and here my voice should be coming from your right earbud. If any sound is missing, then please keep watching. This video covers the operation, diagnosis, and repair of earbuds that use the 3 conductor 1 8 inch TRS plug and earbuds that use the 4 conductor TRRS plug which is the one that has push button controls and a microphone on them. I'm hoping you'll get more than just a little information from me in this video. There's a lot of information here so I'll be moving quickly but I will try to be thorough. You can simply click through the parts you need if you miss something. So sit back and relax. These two earbud connectors are found everywhere. The one on the left is the 3 connector 1 8 inch 3.5 millimeter TRS plug and on the right the 4 conductor TRRS plug of the same size. They both have the tip conductor, a ring conductor, another ring conductor on the TRRS plug and both have the sleeve conductor. Now you can see where they get their names. The designations are usually the tip being the left earbud signal, the ring or ring 1 as the right earbud signal, ground as being the return path for both the earbuds, and on the TRRS, the sleeve being the microphone, which also has a return path to the same ground ring. The TRRS I just described is the latest standard used in most devices as of the date of this video. Now there is one variation of this TRRS connector where the microphone and ground designations are switched. This is the older standard used in the devices listed on the screen as well. If you don't know what yours is, then do a quick check online just to be sure. So as I said, the tip on the TRS drives the left earbud voice coil with the ground wire completing the circuit returning to the sleeve. And on the right, the ring feeds the right voice coil with the other ground wire returning to the very same sleeve where they join together at the sleeve. Two methods can be used to diagnose electrical continuity of your TRS style earbuds. A multimeter is the preferred choice, but if you don't have one, then a copper penny and a galvanized nail or staples and a potato will actually work quite well. For the potato method, don't use anything stainless steel like forks or knives because they will not work. For the earbud repair, I use these tools on a fire resistant surface to work on in a room with proper ventilation for smoke. I used a replacement 1 8 inch TRS stereo audio connector and for the second repair a TRRS connector of the same size. I picked both of them up from my local electronics store. These can be found online. Just search eBay or Amazon for them. All right, so for method one, we'll use an ohmmeter to check for continuity. The readings will vary for different style earbuds, but I would expect to see between 16 and 32 ohms for each side to the ground sleeve. Left and right should measure the same. If any of these measure as open, there's a broken connection. You'll need to Google search the resistance values for yours if you have doubts. And now, if you don't have an ohmmeter, this way will work to check for electrical continuity. Like I said earlier, a copper penny will work just fine with staples too. I'll show you the nail method. You're creating a small battery that will drive each voice coil in the earbuds. It's a very small electric current, but enough for you to easily hear. If you hear a sound clearly in the left and right ears, then there are no broken wires and you can stop right here. If the sound is muffled in one earbud, it could be blown or contaminated with some kind of buildup. Make sure your phone case isn't stopping your connector from going in all the way as well, because that will make your earbuds cut out too. If everything seems good, check out my other video for a common cause of earbuds cutting out. The link is on the screen and also below in the notes if you want to go that way. However, if one or both sides are not working after this test, then we'll continue. Since the majority of broken wires happen right at the connector itself, we'll need to cut the connector wires back from the connector like this. I'll go back about an inch or so. You can try it closer to the connector if you like. Remember, you can't put wire back if you cut off too much and make the wires too short. Separate and strip the wires carefully about half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. You will need to burn back the insulation on the wires. You must stop the flame with the pliers from racing up the wire when burning off the lacquer insulation 
or you'll risk shorting the wires out later when you're putting these wires back together. Once that's done, wipe off the residue from each exposed wire and then wash your hands with soap to be safe. Here we have the typical colored wires, that being two copper grounds, the green left and the red right. Let's check the buds again. Put them in your ears and listen. If both sides work, we're good. Here we'll check with the ohm meter the same way. If either of these methods shows one or both as being an open circuit, that means of course that we have a problem further up the wire, or even possibly that one of the earbuds or both are damaged or defective. So I'll need to address this now. What to do if the wire is broken further up towards the earbuds on either style earbuds that being TRS or TRRS? You'll know it's broken or blown because there will be absolutely no sound when testing with the potato and your resistance values on your meter will read open. If you want to save your earbuds, you could use a cheaper replacement set for the bottom end with the originals at the top. That is an option. You will need to cut your wires near the top to test the buds individually using the same method I showed you. If there is still a problem, then the earbuds are blown and you are out of luck. If your earbuds are $50 or $100 or more, then it's an option well worth considering. So on to the repair. First I'll grab a set of 1 8 inch 3.5 mm TRS 3 conductor connectors. Unscrew the cover and look. These are the tip, ring and sleeve connection points that need to be joined to the wires we just stripped clean earlier. Now slide the threaded cover onto the wire first or you won't be happy later. And twist the two ground wires together like this. You'll now have three wires ready to be connected. You can solder your wires to the terminals of the connector like this, or you can tin the connector and wires first. The choice is yours. On the TRRS coming up next, tinning is the only option though. And please don't hold your connector by plugging it into your $500 phone when you're soldering. That's just crazy. I'm just saying. I've seen someone else do that. Hold your connector down onto a fireproof surface by any means that works for you. Solder your ground connection first. Once that's done, gently push the wires inwards into the connector, which will then allow you to gently crimp and secure the wires to the connector like this. If your connector has connection points that can bend, bend them out a bit to give you better access for soldering. Solder the green left wire to the tip conductor, and then the red right wire to the ring conductor. Now carefully bend those tabs back inward, paying attention to the wires. Don't let the soldered connections touch each other. Now check your work before you put it together. So if all is good, you can thread back on your cover. And optionally, you can use some hot glue to secure the wires in the end of the connector. Yep, it works. So on to the TRRS system, which essentially works the same as the TRS system. 
with one difference being the microphone and controls circuitry. This will be tough if you have sausage fingers. Now when you strip the wires back you'll see the difference. You might see a wrapped up wire. For example, when you open this one you'll see this. Now what? Well, a quick Google search on these leads me to a wire color pinout that looks like mine. This one shows where each wire goes. This shows that the wires wrapped around the microphone wire are part of four wires that all connect to ground. By the way, if your phone starts with an I, at this point in time, these wire colors are likely yours. You must always check the wire colors yourself, okay, because you might see this video years from now and things are always changing. So on mine, the microphone's the white wire and the controls are tangled up red and blue. Red is right, blue is ground, green is left, and the large braid of copper is ground. So just like the last fix, we'll hold the wires where we want the flame to stop and we'll again burn away the insulation on each wire, including the messy looking control wires. Then we'll remove the ash residue and then get this off our hands by washing our hands with soap. After, we'll make sure our wires really are okay. Once you've heard sound in each ear, you can grab your new TRRS connector and unthread the outside cover and remove the plastic insulator sleeve. Now here's the open connector showing the pins where we'll solder. Because the tip and ring one conductor tabs are so small, you'll need a soldering iron or gun with a small tip to get in there. All four conductors will need to be tinned like this. After, slip the threaded cover over all the wires, then the plastic insulator sleeve, and then expose the pre-strip wires for the next step. We'll then combine the four ground wires we identified earlier into one. Once that's done, we'll then tin all the wires. First solder the left wire, which is green, to the tip conductor. Then the red right to the ring one conductor. I then used some heat shrink for the next step. You can use electrical tape if you like. Because the copper wire is bare, we need to stop it from shorting to other conductors. I solved that problem this way. After, connect the microphone to the sleeve conductor. And then finally the ground to the ring 2 conductor. So here we pinch the sleeve conductor around the wires to hold them securely. You can see how the heat shrink tubing we put on is keeping the combined ground wires insulated from the sleeve conductor. Now we'll slide up the plastic sleeve and then thread on the threaded metal cover. And so we'll test again. This is definitely an advantage here in using a proper ohm meter, as we can verify all the resistance values for the control switches along the earbuds themselves.
And now for the optional step of gluing the wire to the end of the connector. So that was a bit of work, but if you have expensive earbuds, then I would say it's worth it. So there you go. I hope you got something out of this and that you can maybe use this as a reference in the future. And thanks for watching.